It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Joe Dard to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the e-design process, and that's something that uh, we, uh, it's a service that we offer at the Center for Online and Continuing Education um, to ensure quality course building uh, with a view to building in quality to the teaching and learning of your online course. And that's really the focus that I want to take during this session. Um, we aim to quality review everything that we do. Um, so every step of the way, we're always thinking about how we can make this the best online learning experience for the student. And there are there are various parts to that. Um, so I would like to introduce some of the people that are going to be helping us to think about this uh, today. Um, and I'd ask them just to introduce themselves briefly. So um, uh, Carrie, do you want to start us off? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gary. I'm one of the digital media assistants for the Center for um, I just provide media support to our faculty, which is really recording, editing, loading videos onto their campus courses and assisting with any other media. Forest, and I am an interactive media specialist, uh, which is kind of a mouthful. But what it, in essence, is um, I create quizzes and assessments that are fun. What happens is I, I make uh, things like drag and drops, matching, click and reveal, ranking. And those are some of the examples. And I can work in Camtasia and Artic Articulate as software. And uh, that, that type of software will interact with uh, a learning management environment such as Canvas and record the student's participation completion status, uh, percentages, or points uh, according to assessment. Jade. Good morning. My name is Jade Adamio. Like Carrie said, I'm a digital media assistant and I help with the development and curation of media for online courses. Judy, would you like to say something about yourself? I will just say that uh, I, I serve the department as an instructional designer and facilitator for professional development and, uh, well, for a, a, a variety of professional development formats. Thanks. And uh, finally, Jess. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jessica Weiss. Uh, I am a learning strategist with the Center for Online and Continuing Education. Um, <clears throat> I do uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a lot of stuff, um, but I'm typically like the first point of contact for faculty members that are interested in any of our services. So I help with kind of the onboarding process and um, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So thank you uh, for having me, it's an honor. Thank you everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, and as uh, Judy said, I'm Joe. Um, I'm an instructional designer. Um, so oh, yes, I, I typically work with faculty to, to start off those course builds uh, through something we call the blueprint and then um, through the canvas building. Uh, and I work with the media team too to, to uh, do the magic that they do. So, uh, as you can see, and you've probably seen this before, um, this is just a rundown of, uh, of how this WebEx session is sort of structured. And uh, you, you can read about this later when we send you the presentation, if, if you would like to. Um, <clears throat> as Em said, she, she can um, help to uh, facilitate any, any comments that you may have. Um, if, you, if you raise a digital hand, um, Judy will let me know um, that you're asking a question. All right. so. In this session, uh, what I'd like to look at uh, and reflect on, um, and hopefully if, if uh, anybody has any input um, in terms of uh, having gone through the process themselves as uh, faculty or as subject matter experts, that would be great to hear. Uh, but we're gonna be talking about three major areas of e-design that, that I think are very important. Um, that's quality and course building, support for um, the pedagogy, and and its value to the online learning. Now, as we're going through the online course build, uh, you know we we do need to factor in, as I mentioned before, many points of quality. Um, and as we as you move through the process, you're going to be working with several different people, from the initial meeting um, with uh, people like Jess. Uh, through the instructional designer, the media specialist, right up to the end uh, when you're when you're preparing to launch your course. We try to work together to produce a learning environment 
that fosters student retention application and success by design. Um, and in service of that, we try to uh, make sure that everything is aligning properly. So um, your assignments are relevant to your course goals, your your readings are relevant, your, your, your videos are relevant to your course goals, so that nothing is superfluous. Um, and yeah, as I said, these are the three big sort of tent poles of, 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 uh, of what, what I perceive to be important in our, in our process. So um, let's take a look at this first aspect, um, quality and course building. This really, re our, our process really relies on subject matter expertise. Without that, we wouldn't really be able to do what we do. Um, and that's why we try to build, as a, as a department, we try to build relationships with people that come to work with us. Um, and that starts off with the first meeting. Uh, Jess, would you like to talk a little bit about how that works? Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Darg. Um, so um, as Dr. Darg mentioned, um, every every most of the uh, instructional services that we have here at COSI uh, do start off with an initial meeting. Uh, the initial meeting is uh, kind of has a two twofold purpose. Um, one is to kind of acquaint the subject matter expert with the process, so what they can expect as they go through um, the, the their service. We we offer uh, a few different kinds of services, so it's important that um, it's it's clear from the get go what what is to be expected. Um, and the the second piece of that is to collect information from the subject matter expert that would be important to you know. Uh, to the designers and and uh, those of us on the on the back end of things, things like um, launch date. We also uh, collect information uh, about textbook affordability um, to support the uh, university in um, our affordability initiatives. So there's a lot of information that, um, that that we collect as well from the subject matter expert, and mostly it's just to make sure that you know there's no questions everyone's kind of clear on on how to move forward so that's kind of an important uh, initial step before the actual process gets started thanks jess um so that gives us a really nice platform to move together into the you know the initial building phase of um e-design which is to say um for those that have experienced it um working on what we call a blueprint um, and then eventually putting that into Canvas. And the blueprint is kind of like a planning document, an outline of um, module by module, an outline of the course, um, that we can make sure that everything we're putting into the course is, is lining up. Um, so your goals are gonna line up with your assignments and your readings, et cetera. And that really relies on a rapport um, between the designers, uh, the coordinators, the project coordinators like Jess, and and also the media team, um, because very early in the process, we we do um, bring the media team or, or a representative into the conversation very early on. So it's very much a team effort. Um, there's no one person calling the shots here outside of the 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 expertise of the of the of the faculty member it's very much a, a, a group effort um and the experience of the team members and the faculty member comes to bear in that um so uh would anybody like to um uh offer any insights if you've if you've worked through this process before or if if you haven't you can ask questions um, what what parts did you enjoy working with the team on on things like the blueprint and the communication you were having with the the um, the builders during the course building phase? Um, or, or what might you want your colleagues who haven't participated want to know? And anybody who's not faculty, feel free to chime in if you would like. The integration of the teams has been uh, just that 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 meeting's gotten. A lot more um, engaging. We have a, a lot more chance to discuss everything up front. We tend to be more on the same page with everything. Um, yes, it, it's it's become more of a team effort. Absolutely, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think the graphic here says uh, says a lot too, where we have the 
subject matter ex expert right there in the center. And there's uh, many, many uh, team effort helping to contribute to um, the, the course itself in different ways. And each one has, they brings their own talents to the table, especially within media or course design, instructional designs. Right, absolutely. No, I I, um, I kind of just would echo uh, what, what some of my colleagues would say or have said is just that I think a lot of thought goes into uh, creating uh, a, a streamlined experience for the subject matter experts. So there's a lot of like, you know, uh, behind the scenes thought as to, you know, <clears throat> which team members, you know, uh, the, the communication lines be behind the scenes of between the team members to to ensure that the subject matter expert has, um, you know, feels like they know who who to contact and, you know, understands that there's really a support network behind them. Yeah, the, the support network is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you said, I I hope it's a relieving experience. Like most of my meetings have been uh, over Zoom the last year or so. Um, I hope it's a relieving experience to see that many people there willing to assist and, and, and take that stress off of your shoulders. So Papania, and I am an instructor in exercise science and health promotion. And I'm actually going through the revamp process now. So I'm not starting um, uh, a course from scratch, but we're, we're revamping it. And you know, going through that process has really forced me to look at, okay, really, what are the best ways to deliver this material? You know, keeping things in short chunks rather than having these long presentations, um, which, you know, I, I can get awfully long-winded, so that's been a little bit of a challenge. Um, but also thinking about what what's the best way to evaluate student understanding and learning, you know, and, and being creative in assignments. Um, and I will say the support is phenomenal. I'm, it happens to be probably the worst semester that I could be doing this because I, I have a terminally ill family member. So it's been a, a tough semester, but um, I love that Jade gives me gentle little nudges. <laughs> like, where are your videos? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm working on them. But, you know, I, I wanted to just point out too, something that I heard is really important. That's relationships. You know, I've I've been working with with Dr. Judy for years now, and I feel like and and Jade and for for this semester and over the summer, and I just feel like the wonderful relationships that I've cultivated with with people at Kochi, that's really the foundation for all this. And without those relationships, nothing else is possible. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. So this is this is very much the stage um, before the course launch. And it's important to stress that we, as a department, we do we do like to uh, provide support for the whole of the process. When you uh, when you turn up at our department, or, or we or we get into a Zoom or a Teams meeting and start working together, that's the beginning. But when um, we're finished building it and it's ready to launch, that's not the end. Um, we, we want to make sure that this is a quality course, not just at the point of launch. Um, it's not, see you later, take care. Um, this is an ongoing process. And so the relationships, as Michelle pointed out, are really integral to that. And these are multiple year relationships. And we're a richer department for it. Alrighty. So the next part of um, uh, the design process that I want to reflect on, it, 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 it really uh, comes at the point of launch. And that's with a view to uh, enriching and supporting the teaching aspect of, of the build, um, of the e-design build. And at this point in the process, you're likely going to be focusing on the media. Uh, with everything with the instructional designer more or less done, um, uh, the the media recordings that you're encouraged to do in e-design are really going to um, bring your course to the next level. So, and, and I'm always amazed at what the media team can do, honestly, on a weekly basis. So I'd like to invite, um, I think, Jade to talk about um, how the media team supports 
the teaching and the pedagogy? Um, absolutely. One of the biggest things we do is like, yeah, we edit, we record, we do all the cool fun stuff, but most importantly, we curate, we, we help you to put your materials and your content online. Um, and, and part of that is figuring out what media best uh, supports that. What do you think is going to best support you and your students getting your messages across? Um, and that can be anything from videos to voiceover PowerPoints. Um, if you like podcasts and you think your students would like a podcast, we're more than happy to, to do that. You don't have to be on camera. And even if you just don't want media, you don't have to. It's, it's a process of discovering what works best for you and your students to, to learn, to, to share in that process. And we're just, we're just here. We're just a tool. We're just an accessory to, to help um, get that for you. Would you say, Jade, that the um, the media, the, the various things that the media team can provide faculty, would you say that that empowers faculty to unleash a kind of a, a next level online experience for students? Absolutely. It's, it's all about uh, maintaining the same, maintaining or even improving upon the, the kind of engagement that you'd get in a face-to-face -face course. Mm -hmm. And what might that look like in um, comparison? Lectures. You are able to pre-record lectures so you're not putting thought into what you're going to say today. You've already recorded them. You've scripted them, hopefully. Um, so you've kind of analyzed what you want to tell your students. You put that out and then you're able to take that time and energy you'd have done into uh, the same lecture Tuesday and Thursday or Monday and Wednesday. And you're able to put that time into maybe discussion boards or uh, more time into grading assignments or more time into reviewing essays. You get some time back to, to put elsewhere. Yeah, that's great points. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's one aspect. Um, but of course, without the uh, without the scaffolding that comes before that, you know, it's just a, a collection of tools, as Jade said. So we we need the solid foundation, and I think that really comes during that interaction period between the the faculty member, you know, the instructional designer, the media team uh, a specialist. Um, <clears throat> to to work together to build something that's well-rounded. Um, I'd like to ask Judy to talk about how effective course layout and alignment contributes to that well-rounded approach. Uh, it, by having everything that we do relate back to accomplishing those module level objectives and the course level objectives, we are building a course that truly, truly supports the quality components that our students uh, need and, and, and are certainly entitled to. Um, we build it, you know, step by step so that they are able to, uh, you know, so that, so that everything connects to each other. It's a, uh, uh, partly part of your the, the uh, topic you have there on scaffolding, but it's also a part of how everything connects. There isn't anything random or, you know, off the wall that goes into the course. Everything is in there in order to support yeah. those objectives and the quality. Absolutely. And we do that. Uh, one of the ways we do that is alignment which if you've gone through the um e-design process you, you're probably a bit sick of hearing about from the the ids but um it is a way for us to be able to to uh reference the various objectives that judy mentioned and link them to specific assignments link them to specific readings media uh we wouldn't want to put an introduction to the wrong module in well, uh, to a module in the in the wrong module. Um, so a way for us to track that internally and to make it clear that it's relevant 
to the the correct sort of learning process is to use alignment. Now, um, if if the if there are any faculty here who who have been through the media uh, uh, recording process for for redesigns or course updates, um, it, it would be great to hear how how you feel it enhanced your your teaching after course launch. Just to reflect on how it enriched some of the the engagement. Our faculty members are perhaps collecting their their thoughts on that. Um, there was something else I kind of wanted to to add as um, kind of on on this on this topic. Um, you know, Jade did a great job, uh, kind of outlining some of the, um, you know, the the lecture content and so on. Um, but I think. One of the things that that makes a quality online course different than uh, you know those old uh, geez what was the name of the like a correspondence course correspondence course yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's like it's a totally different experience because it's not just about you know uh, recording these lectures and throwing them in it's about creating this teacher yeah. presence a connection a community uh, really giving uh, you know a presence to you know the students aren't aren't going to be reacting or excuse me interacting with a with a text name on a screen they're going right. to say i know dr dark i've taken a course with him you know he's yeah. he's the one that's you know really into blah blah blah, blah. like he they know you mm -hmm. and i think that that's really uh, an important um component to this is is really bringing yourself as much as you're comfortable into yeah. into that digital classroom yeah absolutely i i, I think that's absolutely true um and and it's a it's a really robust um uh, service as well um because as you can see from the slide there it, it's it, we don't just stop the media team doesn't just stop at the recording space uh, stage you know they edit and they're very good editors i have to say um we use media site to store everything so storage is never a problem and we can just embed where we where we need to embed and captioning which is huge uh, which is a huge deal because uh, we're always striving as a department and as a university to um, higher access accessibility standards uh, so that we can be as inclusive as possible with online learning. But actually, uh, what you said, Jess, actually uh, made me think that we do also allow um, uh, uh, synchronous um, uh, technologies that allow you know that allow virtual meetings to take place in these courses. So it's not just all about uh, pre-recorded media that is embedded into the course. You know, th there's also the chance to have those live lectures um, to recreate that kind of in-person contact that you that you would have in a traditional classroom. You know, Dr. Dark, uh, one of the things that I've seen, uh, and I'm and I'm sure you've seen this too, that I, I think faculty members have had uh, particularly effective is that, you know, maybe they decide to to rec you know pre-record their their actual lecture content, but then they might hold um, almost like a virtual synchronous office hours kind of a thing, so that students you know can see clarity. There's conversation, all of those. You know that you're 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 not losing the opportunity for for you know synchronous conversation that you may have um, in a, in a in a live classroom. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Would you like to expand on that a little bit? Sure. So you know, I when I first started teaching uh, this online course in 2018. You know, I was really good about making regular emailed announcements, usually at least two a week and, you know, answering my student inquiries, you know, within, you know, even less than 24 hours. So being really on top of that. And I always assumed that that was um, sufficient. But, you know, having having worked with the e-design team, I really now understand how important it is for students to see the human being that is the instructor and how that really enforces the connection between you and your class. Absolutely. Do you, do you feel um, that how your students have reacted to you providing them the opportunity to be able to see and hear you has helped you to build better um, platforms for online learning? Um, yes. And what's interesting is, you know, I teach um, 
a couple of required courses in exercise science and a couple of electives. So it's it's like if, right now I'm teaching four classes and I actually have a handful of students who are taking all four classes with me. You know, I'll have most of my students take multiple courses with me um, before the pandemic, uh, some of which were face to face. And so, you know, I didn't really necessarily think that the instructor presence via video was important because they knew me face to face from other courses. But, yeah. but since the pandemic, and, and now that the trend is really moving towards online, it's really important to give them in, in that virtual space because they're just not getting it any other way. Yeah, uh, and I think providing that for them uh, is enriching for you as an instructor. It is, it is. You know, I, I've always, um, in, in my face-to-face -face classes, I've always made some really good connections with students and I guess I just assumed that was never possible in an online environment, but nothing could be further from the truth. It's just dealing with our new reality as it is and coming up with creative ways to create that. Yeah, and, and every year the software um, you know, takes a step forward and gives mm -hmm. us these new ways to, to make these connections, which is really at the heart of online learning. It's very it much is. about I mean, making connections. Yeah, and that's what teaching is about in general, making connections. Yeah. And Michelle, uh, just just to reinforce what you just said, we've actually had a couple of uh, faculty members who have said after going through the online experience a couple of times, she actually was knew her students better after the online experience mm. than she mm. ever had in, in a face to face class for a number of reasons because they were willing, they were just very open with her. Well, you know, I, it's interesting. P students who are shy by nature tend to keep to themselves in a in a in a face to face class. In an online class, they tend to be more outgoing. And I do a couple of online live lectures and, and courses, and I'm amazed at the participation that students engage in, not only with me, but with one another via the chat. Students will ask a question in the chat, and before I can address it, another student has already answered the question, uh, yeah, which is amazing. I love that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for your input there, Michelle. Um, so the, the, third, uh, the third part of, um, my 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 little triad, if you like, um, is is really what we've we've been talking a little bit about this at the end there. Um, but it's it's uh, that e designs provide value for the for the students, provide value for the learning uh, that students go through and experience. Um, as as the pedagogy, uh, as we design the pedagogy for on, for online environments, um, we want it to empower the instructors to teach effectively. For for the learning aspect, um, we, we want that to to then in, in turn give to give value to uh, to the students who are, who are online students who are there not necessarily in person and not necessarily synchronous. In the hope they will um, stick with it um, in terms of retention, that they will apply themselves as effectively, if not more effectively, than in in person situations, that, and that essentially they get the success faculty and and the design teams are empowering them to achieve a lot of that. Um, is, as far as we're concerned, in the in the design aspect of it, um, it is really dependent on the on the tools on on the the processes that we build in to, to the design and development of each online course. So what I'm what I'm thinking of <clears throat> are things like the you know the copyright checks, the accessibility checks that, that we provide to make sure that all of the materials, all the content that goes into a course build are absolutely sound. Um, the the quality uh, metrics that we use to review courses several times before it even launches, um, which we base on uh, nationally recognized standards for online course uh, for online learning, and also the support of the whole team. So this this is a build that goes through several different stages, um, and. Recently, we've actually really sort of improved our review process, our quality review process, and it's looking incredible. Um, it's very rigorous. And would anybody in, on the panel like to talk about 
some of the, some of these aspects. Um, Linnell, would you like to give some insights into quality metrics? Because I know you talked about that in a previous discussion that we had. Quality, uh, bringing up the, the student success is a very good target for uh, uh, adding quality to your course and ensuring engagement. Um, keep, keeping them um, participating, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a high graded participation type of step, you know, um, something that goes into the grade book that can be quite intimidating. It could be a low stakes type of activities. Um, so, um, we, we've used PowerPoints uh, in the past. Uh, now we have the opportunities of using other things that are more uh, engaging, such as drag and drop. Um, uh, hovering over images uh, and revealing stuff and click and reveal type of things. And I, I believe the footprint that the, that the uh, learner puts into or the, um, the investment of their time and effort and curiosity really makes them lean forward into the, the assessment and into the learning module and into the, the materials and go and they start Connecting these aha moments. Oh, why? Okay, that's why I do that. Or that's how I can do that. Or this is a new skill I didn't have before. And then they apply these new skills and they're like, look, okay, they they click together. And I think that that of course, you know, that makes the the learner very happy. I think there has a you know, a lot of like when you when you when you put forth effort, it's not so easy all the time, but once you accomplish something like that, a new skill, and you're able to talk about those skills and apply them to, to new experiences, brings in a lot of happiness, self-worth, and also it does create a connection between the student and, and the, uh, the, the instructor. Yeah, absolutely, Linnell. That's 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 an amazing point. The self worth um, uh, aspect of it for, for for learners is is very important. It it becomes a kind of um, recursive. Um, you know, if the if the course is built well, and if 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 the quality uh, helps to connect all of these various um, uh, methods for ensuring or, or or encouraging success, at least the self worth becomes. Uh, hopefully kind of a, a recursive kind of relationship with the course and the more you engage in quality online learning hopefully the more successful you'll be and if you're more successful <laughs> full then it, it follows that that you will be happier uh, and satisfied with online learning it's 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 not always easy to convince people who who don't think online learning is as effective as in-person learning that it's worth doing an online course but by and large i think that lives and dies by the quality that's built into a course i i don't believe um because i wouldn't be working in the job i'm in if uh if i thought that by definition, online learning was inferior to, to, to in-person learning. I, I just think that it really depends on how we build these things, how we think through the teaching and how the students engage with the learning that um, online learning can be a very successful way for students to, uh, to uh, do the best that they can do and to apply themselves. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, Jess, you had some insights on this one. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, well, of course, um, you know, Linnell and, and Dr. Dog, what you had shared regarding, you know, student engagement, enjoyment, retention, all of those things, I think, are the, the centerpiece to which all of our quality standards um, you know, uh, are surrounded by. So um, just a little background for those of you who may not know, um, our internal review process, we have a rubric um, that has these these standards to, to which all of the courses that go through our process must meet. Uh, this rubric is an internal document, so uh, it's it's what our reviewers use to um, to review the course. It's actually based off of Quality Matters uh, rubric for higher for excuse me, it's for um, 
higher higher learning. So Quality Matters is a nationally recognized organization that I believe was started by, and please, I think Dr. Judy, you may you may know a little bit more about this, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was started by teachers and designers to, to uh, really set a foundation for what quality online learning should look like. So that kind of sets the standards for um, what the design of the course should look like. And that informs not just our review, but our whole process from the beginning. So that, that uh, blueprint document that we create, the actual uh, design of the, of the Canvas course itself, the, the types of assessments, all of that, the accessibility components, um, all of that is kind of baked into our process so that it's it's um, the internal review processes uh, typically aren't that uh, they don't require all too much in terms of uh, um, adjustments of course here and there um, there there are some uh, revisions or suggestions by the reviewers but on the whole the course is really set up from the beginning yeah. to meet those standards yeah add in with uh, with you to let uh, let our our guests know that the internal review process is primarily well it is a completely a review of how we have built the course there is it is never ever a review of the content because Absolutely. our subject matter experts are the faculty and that it is their content but it's a review of how how we were able to build the course. And just to go back to a comment that you made, Quality Matters has been doing uh, research on online learning for over 15 years. So all of the standards that they recommend, which we, we follow, are based on the results of that research. Does that differ from QM? Does QM actually review the material or just the course build? Uh, I Dr. Dar, did you want to jump on that? Or yeah, not? yeah, no, they they don't review the the content, the material. Um, it's the same. Well, I mean, their process is a little bit more rigorous, um, <clears throat> just because they're doing it in an official review capacity. Um, but just as we don't um, critique or review the uh, the content, um, um, neither do they. Um, so it's very much just based on the design standards. Um, that the the instructional designer and other people in in the in the collection of of designers and builders and coordinators are um, looking at. It's really just how the material fits together. We and don't really that, worry uh, about the content. There is when when a when a course goes to quality matters for review, one member of the review team is also a a subject matter who it, it's familiar with the subject matter of that course. In order to make sure that it does all that it does all work uh, to, on behalf of the student. Yeah, that's right. I I apologize. I just had one last clarifying comment. Um, our internal so so an e design, a course design update, our instructional services um, that you would work with one of our designers to develop. So they they go through an internal review. They do not yield a quality matter certificate. That's actually a separate external process. So there we do right. offer a, a, a QM. Uh, basically, you'll work with um, uh, Maria Rotundo, who is our manager of quality and our kind of our QM coordinator, so to speak. And you would work with her to prepare your course for Quality Matters. Then that's when we send it externally to Quality Matters, and right. that's where it would get the Quality Matters certification. So the e-design process, the course design update process, doesn't yield in a Quality ma a Quality Matters certificate. I just wanted to clarify that, but thank you very much. No, that's a great point. And, and that is the pathway that we provide as a department to eventually, if, if that's a direction you want to head in, quality matters certification, which is in this in this country very much the gold standard for online learning. Um, so uh, and, and that's something that you can you can get and you know, display the seal that they provide to you on your on your course. And um, that's at that point, it's very much the highest um, quality of of, uh, of online learning um so the, the the final slide that i have here just just shows um how how these three components really fit together um the, these are the important aspects and i think they're all interdependent very much so um we 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 wouldn't be able to put 
the effort into building something of value um, in in lieu of in person teaching if we didn't have if we weren't focusing on each of these three areas. Alrighty, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining us today.